so I have to tell you guys, um, I feel like a terrible farmer as far as like permaculture here is concerned or just being smart is concerned because we have, of course, all the goats and we have all of these overgrown woods behind us. And here I am shopping online looking for hay. Now we're gonna need hay this winter. That's why I started looking. Was just to say, you know, let's go somewhere, let's buy bales, let's, you know, kind of get them in season out of the field, get them cheap, store them up somewhere. That's, that's a great idea, that's good farming. But then I was like, well, I need a year's worth. I need to make sure I secure a year's supply. Now, on that note, last fall, I wanna say it was in November sometime, I, I made a video about it, going and getting hay for the goats because we realized there was a shortage and we, we need to stock up. So we went and we bought what we thought was enough for two bales a week for 20 weeks. We got 40 bales. That was planning on basically five months and that'll get us through to April. You know, people will start being cut in hay. There'll be fresh hay available in places. Um, so we'll be fine. Well, it is now middle of July, actually late July, and we still have like 10 bales. The goats didn't come anywhere close to two bales a week like one bale a week and we don't really ration it they just don't eat that much goats don't really like hay but they get roughage value from it so anyway here i am looking at you know i mean there's your prime example they're on a pile of wood chips eating twigs that's what they want they want twigs and bark their browsers anyway so here i am thinking about how to get a year's worth of hay and then i'm running the tractor and the brush hog and i'm mowing all this underbrush and i'm just like what duh why am i so ignorant about this so part of it is obviously it's easy to just leave them in the pen and give them hay uh but you know that we can we can be so much smarter about this if we just let them browse in the woods like they should that's what we need to do let them eat down the woods they happily will go right back to their pen like chickens going back to the coop the biggest thing right now is watching and making sure the dogs don't mess with them so we got Troy's down here sniffing around. Troy's met him before. Um, our only real concern is Sally. I don't know where she went. Sally's our German Shepherd stray that showed up and she's like, I don't know, she showed up with teats on her like she had pups, but she seems to me like she's still a pup herself. She's very, very playful, energetic, and she just bounces around. Well, that spooks the goats. And what I, what I don't want to happen is have her spook the goats and that gets them running and then she thinks it's playing and then they she ends up biting and hurting one because she just thought they were playing. So we're watching them closer right now while we've got them out. And we just got uh, Prince and his four girls out right now. If I let out the rest of them, then that means that I've got to get Prince put away and get Jack separated. And then I can have all the does come out together. And I might be okay with that. But I think for right now, I just want to watch and see how these girls do. So far, the dogs haven't bothered them. I don't even know where Sally went. Troy's out here wandering around. Sally, I haven't seen. I don't know if she went up to the house to lay down or, or, or where she went, honestly. But anyway, so what I'm wanting to do long term, ideally, is I want to have a fence, a good fence around all these woods. And I'm going to do just an electric fence is my plan. So to get all that set up first, I want to put an electric fence inside their main pen so they learn it and they get used to it. And then I'll string up electric fence and I'll just do small you know, kind of paddocks out here in the woods. Really, I want to do a small area and I want to kind of mob graze them through there, you know, throw them in there for a day or two and let them just own it and then move the electric fence a little bit or, or just ideally long-term have big fence, but I want to really get them in there, get them to mow it down. Cause some of this like right here is too rough for me to get the tractor off in anyway. And I don't really feel like weed eating it again. Why, sh why should I, why, why would I spend the time and the gas and the effort to weed eat when I've got hooved weed eaters right here that's their job you know long term we're we're building this herd we're raising this herd and we have to manage it for all of our wants so you know we have to be consistent with who we're breeding to who we have to keep track with all that we can't just throw them all out there and let it happen we we could if all we were doing was breeding goats but because we're having to do pedigree we have to keep track of who bred who blah 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 um on our milkers we want to manage their diet so we don't want to put the milkers out here in the weeds and let them just eat weeds and then have the milk not taste good so there's always those considerations that you still have to have we still have to have some hay um, obviously we still need to get hay for this winter but we still have to have alfalfa for the milkers um, but i mean this is the perfect opportunity to to take advantage of the goats 
let them do what they want to do anyway. I wish they would stop eating wood chips and go across and eat weeds. But you know what? I'm just going to let them do what they want to do. But it's the perfect advantage to feed them for free and get something out of it too. So anyway, like I said, we're just kind of doing introduction right now, letting them out here to, to browse around. They're having a good time. They're, they're picking at twigs, but you can see Prince is over here working on the fence, eating on a weed too. So we just need to let them do that. But for right now, we're just watching and making sure that the dogs don't, like I said, get out of hand and start running them and, and get them stressed out, which it doesn't look like they're really gonna bother. Troy's just hanging out with them like, He's acting like he's one of the goats. He's over there eating weeds too. But yeah, we just have to kind of babysit him for a while to make sure that we trust them out with the dogs that there won't be any problems. So we'll be out here working for the next few hours, keeping an eye on the goats as we do. Still getting work done. Oh, there I found Sally. She's over here. <laughs> Sally's over here sleeping under the excavator in the shade. Lazy dog. Same old game. Day two on the renowned browsing effort. We put all the does together taking the bucks away from them. They're pretty wrapped up, you know, headbutting and trying to establish dominance, even though they have common fences all the time and see each other all day, every day, yet when they get together and can actually touch each other, then it's game on. You got Evie and Eve and Luna going at it. You got Carol and Halo were about to. But actually what I wanted to mention was just, you know, here they are, whole lush woods full of tasty green treats and they're on a darn pile of wood chips eating twigs and dead leaves that's what they want you can't change it i'm not going to try to chase them off the pile and spend all day trying to push them over there to the woods i figure they'll work this pile over and then they'll decide eventually they're done with it and once they are then they'll maybe move on over to the woods until then that's all i can do until i get a you know some sort of fence built to to make them go over there so that's all we're gonna be able to do for now is just watch them eat dead twigs